fantastic. This is GT racing right now. He's got tracks and he got rid of both of them. Maloney! Oh, oh he's taking Anderson. Anderson's up the hole. Oh, my God. Oh, big crash. Oh, my goodness. Half the field's going to get rolled. Six is very close. These guys are one I want to make their way through the field very quickly. This is it! This is over! I can't believe this! Oh my god! God, what?! Forty of the best sim racers. One hundred thousand dollars on the line. Who will rise to the challenge? This is the most competitive and sought after season in iRacing World Championship history. This is where legends are made. This is the Porsche Esports Super Cup. This is the original esport racing game. This is iRacing. This is a circuit which always goes down in folklore, be it for the 12 kilometer absolute massive ride that it gave people in the 60s to the revised circuit now. It's always had its changes being part of public road, but since it's become its own circuit, it's effectively national heritage here in Belgium. This is one of those tracks which you have to say is one of the all-time greats. No matter where you are, what you've done, what you've heard, everyone knows what Spa Francorchamps is. Welcome, ladies and gentlemen, to the iRacing Esports Network, brought to you by Simspeed TV on the biggest weekend of iRacing to date, as we have Sim Racing Expo action coming to you later on today, live from the Nürburgring, but here with Simspeed TV, it's Jake Sperry in the commentary booth. Joined alongside you by Ross Rizzo as qualifying is currently underway here in the Parramatta Suzu Ute AOSC Series. 20 minutes to get a time in and some of the biggest names in Australian sim racing are wanting to stamp their authority down and say that they are at the top. Ross, we welcome you to the conversation. This is an important race for a number of reasons. The championship is one of them, form is another, and of course, ultimate practice for the Supercars E Series coming up. Yeah, couldn't have said it better. Excellent intro to the to the track, by the way. I mean, we know this track from Formula One and GT, certainly not with uh, this style of car, but I think it's an absolutely awesome combination because it's not a car that would take this track particularly well without its downforce, but it's a phenomenally awesome challenge. And yes, it is impo all important practice for the upcoming E-Series. So we're seeing some big names out there tonight. Of course, the likes of Jared Philsell, Jordan Ross, um, and the usual uh, Motley crew of Marlon McMullen, Taliantic, um, McKee, and and the likes, all needing to get their their points uh, for the championship sorted. Let's talk about those points for the championship because at the moment we look at the overall standings there, and it is Mark One who have control with Harley Haber top of the standings by a comfortable margin as well. That margin is up over 160 points. So they are in really strong position. Marlon McMullen, the privateer in second, has been ever so consistent. Brady Myers has had uh, a bad result last time out at Sebring. He's currently in third. Kyle Stokes fourth. Andrew Gilliam missed last round, so uses it as one of his drop weeks. He drops the fifth as the standings at the moment do not show drop weeks. Tally Ancic there in sixth for pursuit with Stephen Varga seventh and Jordan Ross in eighth. That's an interesting championship to look at here, Ross, because Harley's got the lead and he's got what I would consider a healthy lead at this stage in the championship. Now he's effectively just got to manage those drivers behind him. Yeah, but you, you, you alluded to the fact that um, drop rounds aren't factored in yet. So that will favor uh, making sure you're getting big results on the board like Harley has been. 
so his form his form guide is looking excellent right now. But that drop round for Brady, we know he's on form. Uh, uh, sorry, the the poor round out at Sebring for Brady, despite having pace but not picking up a result, will hurt him. But ultimately, the drop round will bring him back into contention. But that was a missed opportunity ultimately, where he was contesting for the lead and missed out. And there are a number of drivers in the similar boat. They need to get the they need to make performances count while they can to get into contention here. So while Harley is looking okay out in front, he's actually looking better than okay. They're still way too long in the championship to consider that he needs to cruise home from here. I don't think Harley knows the definition of cruise, to be honest. Oh, no, I don't think he does either. And looking at the non-endurance standings, or the standard bearer, as I like to call it, uh, it is the case here in Season 7 that Harley Hope has got 120 points over Marlon McMullen. Kyle Stokes up there in third position, 210 points back. But that doesn't tell you all of the story here in that non-endurance championship because, of course, that one is only fought in the 150 length races, which means that you have a different set of skills to try and go win that. And in terms of the team championship, it is very clearly Mark 1 who are in control. They've got 250 points at the moment over Evolution Racing Team 1. Pursuit find themselves in third team. Hyperdrive fourth. Zero Esports Blue in fifth. And then you've got uh, Gone Rogue Motorsports and the two other Pursuit cars. Three Pursuit cars inside the top eight in terms of points. That is solid at the moment as Jordan Ross is the fastest man in qualifying at the moment. 220.3. And crucially enough, it is Evolution Racing Team. One, two, three. Ross, Phil Cell, Scott. Yeah, great start for those boys. So th I think they'll be just pleased to get their first laps not invalidated. That is a huge challenge uh, to, to get over with this track because it is long, very easy to pick up the off tracks, very easy to ruin that first lap. But they've gotten that on the board. There's also Kyle Stokes sitting nicely in, in fifth place. So five cars in the top 10 to start the session. But of course, long way to go and they'll want to improve on that. And I'm noticing the three gap, uh, three tenth gap between Phil Cell and Jordan Ross. I'm sure that will close significantly throughout the course of the session. Certainly will do. Sam Sutton, the military man, finds himself in fourth position at the moment in his qualifying. He's only two thousandths off of the 088 of James Scott and his first run this season. He'll be looking to try and get some practice in for that E-Series and show exactly what he is capable of. Your top ten looks like this. Ross, Phil Sell, Scott, Sutton, Stokes, Gilliam, Boyd, Haver, Griffin and McKnight. That is how your top ten looks at the moment and there are still drivers to set lap time to the likes of Michael Healy, Brady Myers, Mitchell McLeod, Brian Borg needs to set a time as does Tom Freer at the moment and Marlon McMullen so still a whole handful of names can go out there and put some great times in around this track and this is another one of those tracks where I think you have to be your very best to get up there to the top and have one of the best drivers because this is probably the jack of all trades track you've got the slow and twisty sections you've got the high speed this is the setup nightmare track which nobody likes to set up for <laughs> agreed um you know the fast and flowing nature of this track you know it has a lot of um tendencies like phillip island which we know have you know very high tire tire wear rates we have very long loaded corners like 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 puhan like radion like stavalot and paul Freire and blanchemont as well have a huge toll on the cars as well but you need to be optimizing your speed through those through those corners so if you're able to balance the car at high speed you should be in uh, pretty good form here but of course we've got the the tight sections like like you said bus stop la source and um the hairpin at ravage or, or brussels at the um, um after malmody as well which you know you need to have good balance very very important patience as well and of course don't pick up off tracks especially on a hot lap Especially, this is notorious for those as now Marlon McMullen moves up into 10th place on a 2.21.1. He goes a 10th quicker than Tom Freer, who in the last minutes has gone up into 10th position as well. So it seems that the times are there and it is very early morning here at the moment out on track. It's currently in sim time, 6 o'clock in the morning, which means this track is mighty cold and will heat up as this race goes on. So who can maximize the setup now in qualifying and then turn a race pace into a setup which works well as the track seemingly is going to heat up at the moment. You have to say here, um, Ross, that this is going to be a very tough qualifying. There are drivers down the order who you wouldn't expect. Biggest name of all, Thomas Hinz in the 52. He's down in 26th place and that's not what we expect. No, certainly not, but he's probably not surprised. He'll probably wait till the last moment to actually get, get his lap in. Until then, he'll just keep keep having a send, as he, um, as he says. We're also seeing um, 
Michael Talianch, it's a fair, a fair way down as well. He should be able to pick up the pace fairly soon. Bo Albert's having a good crack tonight, but he's probably a little bit, a little bit behind where, where he, he probably should be. He does undersell himself in, in his cars, but then again, he's only three hundredths of a second um, away from f jumping up four positions ahead of Damian Johnston, who, by, um, by coincidence, had a fantastic round last time out. Also, not a great qualifying in that particular round for Johnston, but made his way up through the field. But I think we should see him well inside the top 20 by the end. We certainly should. Brady Myers has gone to 13th position on his first representative lap at 2.21.4. So pace not here for him at the moment. But it is still Jordan Ross in the 143 who is in complete command at the moment at the front of this field. You've got Kyle Stokes there in fifth. And of course, Jordan Ross is on a flying lap at the moment. So four Evolution Racing Team cars inside of the top five. Sam Sutton, uh, the black sheep in all of that at the front and then it's effectively your title contenders who sit behind Gillian Boyd Haber on a 220.8 the difference two tenths between eighth and second but now first has gone quicker Jordan Ross has found an extra tenth here 220.2 he loves this track oh, he's going great fantastic lap from Jordan Ross he's also got his teammate in Jared Philsell just ahead who I think is starting a lap he might have picked up a nice little toe uh, for that lap as well. So Jared will be looking to fire back on this lap if he's indeed on a hot lap. Oh, he has a big wiggle at the top of Radion. Oh, he's got to be careful about that big wiggle up there. You could so easily get it wrong. Talk about Damien Johnstone. We were earlier. He's moved up to 14th position in his qualifying as the times continue to tumble. Jamie McKnight has having a fantastic qualifying by his standards. He's up in 12th position and loving it with the ERT set. It must click for him around this track as Phil Cell makes his way through Malmedine towards Ravage. Beautiful downhill right-hand bend, which is always so very, very interesting get right around he goes and then to Jackie Ix formerly corner which did not have a name and through he's so aggressive through that section got to be careful on the exit he may have just overstepped the mark there if he wasn't too careful yeah and it looks like um Jordan Ross has aborted behind him as well so um not great laps right now for the ERT boys maybe they're feeling the sting of a slightly uh uh, warming up track, but yes, this this set looks pretty solid, especially with Jamie in 12th place. So he's looking quite quite nice um, right now. James Scott only has um, to find just over one hundredth of a second to jump over Jared Philsell um, and put him on the front row next to Jordan Ross, who's looking very strong right now. That lap that he put in, looking stronger and stronger um, as the session goes on. Talking of stronger and stronger, Craig Jones moves up to 12th position on a 21-3. Ian Bird up to 17th and just getting word in from the team boss at Mark 1, that being Mark Samuel. They say they've got no pace here today. They say they're going to be fighting for minor points, so to speak. They're not confident about where they are and that is going to be a huge thing for the other teams. Knowing that the championship leader is going to be struggling here today will fight, but effectively has to do a Fernando Alonso 2012 fight with the inferior car. Weird for Mark to kind of uh, show his hand like that, but at least he's saying it uh, like it is. So the Mark 1 guys up against it today. They've they've had a fantastic season so far, so this could be that little bump in the road. If they, um, It could be a real uh, test of character to see how they recover from this. So we're looking at Kyle Stokes, currently fifth for Evolution Racing Team, about to finish off a lap. He's got a nice little toe from the Penrite Racing Car ahead of him. Keeps it just within the track limits through Blanchimont. Heads into the bus stop, hard onto the brakes. Hopefully doesn't lock a wheel. Looks a little bit tentative. Probably the Penrite card. Oh. Oh, just starting to get in the way, and then he aborts the lap. No, he just got two wheels up on the anti-cut curb, and once you do that, your lap is wrecked, and he's got to be so careful that he doesn't get that wrong. Eye on Bo Albert, though, down in 32nd position, 222.4. Looks very good in pre-qualification. Cannot put the lap together for the Logitech Altus Esports team. No Jackson, Susan Harlow for this one. So they're going to be a little bit lighter in terms of what they can do. And it's a good lap. It's a 221.5. It moves himself up onto the outside of the eighth row with Brady Myers on his inside to 16th position. Fantastic work. Damian Johnstone has moved up into 11th place at the moment. Your top drivers, though, that top eight has remained practically unchanged throughout this qualifying as we have just six and a half minutes to go. Wayne Taylor coming up to the bus stop as well. Down in 40th place, we'll be looking to try and get 
uh, get his qualifying session, I guess, underway, really. Exits out of the bus stop, relatively straight exit, a little bit of a squirm. Heads over the line for a mid-22. Where does that put him? I don't, elevates him up to 33rd. Does so that's good work from Wayne Taylor. He gains seven positions, goes up ahead of the likes of Greg Sharp and Brenton O'Brien and Jeff Bennett and Jonathan Bain. So that's some very good work. Mid pack looks very interesting. Likes of Scott Gamble, Jacob Knight, Matt Morris all together, Brett Hender in there, Thomas Hinds all around that 25 to 30 position in front of that Guy Leach, Michael Healy there in 20 position. Expect them to make some moves in this field. This is going to be a tough race for drivers to make positions because you've got easily 30 hungry drivers who can go out there and put on a party jacob knight being one of them rounding uh, the final corner and making that charge that short charge over to the line and it's a 221 six and that jumps him inside the top 20 20 it's exact yeah nice job from jacob i'm also noticing we've just got five minutes left of the session and michael talianch still down in 46th about 14 seconds off the next car so he really needs to get a wiggle on he's probably only got two more chances given the length of this track so pressure is on for the triple seven well luckily enough for him the 107 percent rule does not apply in this series so he will be able to take the starting grid no matter how bad his time may be clearly struggling as brady myers finds himself on a lap down in 15th position at the moment trying to find just a little bit of something to say that he can get up there and race as hard as he possibly can heading through that penultimate corner there at Blanchemont now the bus stop chicane comes up for him on the brakes of zero esports blue car managed by Scotty Briscoe who has been probably one of the biggest revolutions of 2019 and what he's been able to do to bring his team up to a level cross the line Myers goes and he does himself a 220.9 that's good enough for the top 10 that's two zero cars now inside the top 10 both sharing the fifth row yeah that's much better from Brady so he'll want to if he's got the pace that he had last week he'll um he'll be a threat he'll need to quickly get uh, get back out onto track to have another crack at maybe cracking the top five someone else who needs to have a good crack is james mckay he was 13th after his first run he's now back down into 20th position but a 221 one moves him up into 11th place so that's some good work there by the pursuit sim racing driver some saying that he's having a stellar and a breakout season as griffin gardner goes to sixth with a 220.736 a thousandth off of knocking Carl Stokes in the triple eight back Harley Haber, though, in the 21, looking to make his push to the bus stop chicane. Their times are starting to tumble as they make their way to the final corner. What has the championship leader got? He's in ninth at the moment. Needs to find something more. That more is a 220.4. He goes second. He's on the front row. What a time. It's about time someone filled that gap. And <laughs> it happens to be Harley while they seem to be struggling on a setup of all things. Well, Marlon McMullen, keep an eye on this. He's back in 12th position. Damage limitation needed for the 85. His race pace, his race craft, arguably better. He knows how to Alain Prost his way to a championship. He knows how good that he can be at just putting the right results together. Across the line goes Marlon McMullen, and he does himself a 221 flat. He gains one position over James Mackay. He stays in 11th because Jack Boyd has just gone up into ninth place and he's having a very, very solid run of things at the moment. So your top 10 with just two and a half minutes to go. Ross, Haber, Phil Cell, Scott Sutton, Stokes, Gardner, Gillian, Boyd and Myers. It is a who's who at the top. Oh, for sure. They're, they're, you've got to start your lap now as, as well, by the way, because the timer is about to expire. So there's not long left to make a change in the in the standings. Right now, we've got Jared Philsell making his way through Fagne and into Stavalot. He's got a car in front of him, so he might be picking up a little bit of draft, but he could also stand to get balked. This could be this could be a really important lap. Could be could put him onto pole position if he's played his cards right. That is a little bit wide, but he should get away with the off track there. So on the run to Blanchemont, it is seems to take for uh, take forever out of Stavalot. The patience that you need on the throttle, the car ahead gets out of the way. He gets on the brakes into into Blanchemont. Nice, a very tidy must be must be mm. said. Doesn't look like he's in a rush. Gets onto the brakes for the bus stop. The final two corners. Oh, he's in very hot. He locks the rears right at right at the death. Hooks it up nicely for the left. Nice little clip. Another wiggle um, out of the final corner and across the line. Will he want? Will he better? Is two twenty point six? No. He does not. He might have off track that. He still has one more shot though, with one minute twenty remaining. 
He certainly does, and now it's all about who's going to be the last man over the line. Keep an eye on this. Griffin Gardner probably looking to set up his final flying lap. Sam Sutton will not go any quicker in fifth position. That's something just to keep in mind as Griffin starts his flying lap. Jordan Ross just behind him with a minute to go on the clock. He is the current pole sitter at the moment. He needs to go good. Tom Freer in the 946 looking for a time to go quicker. 221.7. That doesn't do himself any justice in this place at the moment. Bo Albert, 06. Looking at an improvement, 221-2, he does. He goes 15th. He's happy with that. Thomas Hins has found some time. He's up into 18th position at the moment. Brian Borg yet to set a lap time as of yet. He will now go on to try and make sure that he's got something left. That is a one-lap shootout. Here's Tali Ancic crossing the line right now, and he's going to start his do-or-die lap. Who's going to be the last one over the line? Carl Stokes will get one more lap. Andrew Gilliam trying to massively set up his lap as we keep an eye on this and keep everybody informed. Hender trying to go through 10 seconds to go. Norris will get some times. Will Brady Myers, I'm not sure he will here, on the break, stuck behind Jet Bennett. They're gonna be stuck. So Brady Myers will be the first driver who will not get a time and is held up through the bus stop slightly. Checkered flag comes out here in qualifying. Myers will have nothing, I think, to argue with. No, he doesn't, he left it way too late. Here's Guy Leach, currently in 25th position, looking to try and find a bit more. 221.9, his best so far. There's a 221.7, improves time but not position. That's very, very crucial. We look on back to Jared Philsell, pushing hard through Curva Paul Frere. Now looking to make his run to Blanchemont Corner. And oh, he's got two wheels on the grass. He's pushing so hard, trying to maximize every little inch of the track and may have just got that slow down penalty. Another little clip of the grass, and now he'll definitely go wide, and that's abandoned ship. Phil Sell will not go any quicker in terms of his qualifying lap, and that's so, so vital as the leader currently in qualifying, Jordan Ross, may just be safe, but he's got to get a better time in to make sure he can guarantee it. He's only got a tenth and two thirds of an advantage at the moment over Harley Haber, and he wants a little bit more than that if he wants to put himself firmly and squarely on pole position. Hits the brakes, left-hand bend coming up there of Blanchemont. And now to the bus stop chicane goes the 143 machine fought for the championship last season. It's been a sluggish start for him this season, but now he's fighting this one from the front foot. If he gets pole position across the line, goes Jordan Ross, 2.22.1.2. He finds some more pace, a few hundredths of a second, which will be very, very happy to see. Brian Borg pushes a little bit wide, heading through his final few corners as he now looks to try and make his run towards the line as he misses the apex there in the first part. Just gets it all gathered up in the second part of the bus stop chicane. And over the line, Brian Borg will look and does himself a nothing so he will start from dead and last for this one damien johnstone currently in 11th position needs to find a bit more time has he got enough 220.9 is best no he's slightly fractionally slower as he goes through what about gilliam though in the 201 eighth position at the moment 220.999 not good enough for him as he tries to make his run over to the line as now the final drivers go through. Brady Myers didn't make it. The grid looks like this. It will be Jordan Ross on pole position then with Harley Haber, the championship leader, alongside Jared Philsell, Australia's phenom. Starts from third with James Scott making it an all-evolution racing team row two. Sam Sutton starts from fifth with Kyle Stokes in sixth with Griffin Gardner and Andrew Gilliam on row number four. Row five consists of Jack Boyd and Brady Myers. In 11th place, we have Damian Johnstone from GRM, then James McKee from the Pursuit Sim Racing crew. Marlon McMullen will want to improve from 13th. Then we have Tom Freer in 14th. Bo Albert, not familiar in these cars, but should be familiar with this track. We'll need to emulate his uh, SSA performance on Wednesday night to improve from there. Craig Jones in 16th. Jamie McKnight will be happier with 17th, but probably want a uh, top 15 to join his ERT teammates. Then we have Michael Healy of Trick from, eight, uh, from 18th, Thomas Hins in 19th, and Stephen Varga rounding out our top 20. Ian Bird plays blackjack whilst two little ducks will happen for Jacob Knight. 23rd will go to Jamie Stovall and Christian Smart alongside him. Row 13 consists of Guy Leach and Scott Gamble. Rob Bowden starts this one for 27th with Kane Houston alongside David Kinman and Michael Kirkham make row 15. 
Then we have Greg, Greg Sharp from the Penrite um, Self Sim Force crew. Then Matt Morris in 32nd. Shane Evans from 33rd. Wayne Taylor for MF, MFR in 34th. Brett Hender from 35th. Jet Bennett 36th. Jonathan Ben in 37th. Dylan DeBono 38th. Then Joshua Pickett 39th. And then Simon Vella from 40th. Alan Dawson starts from 41st with Brenton O'Brien. Simon Mazzomo and Craig Anspach then on row 22. Row 23 is Thomas Freeman and Lindsay Hobbs. Then you've got Matthew Norris and Michael Taliancic miles down the order. Matt Stratford, Brian Borg and Mitchell McLeod did not set representative qualifying laps as that makes the 51-car grid that could all take to the start, which happens in just under a minute and a quarter's time. Jordan Ross in complete control at the front of this field, blitzed everyone in terms of qualifying, but he's got the hardest racer in Australia, Harley Haber, alongside. He's got the greatest racer, some may argue, in Australia, Jared Philsell behind him, and he's got a whole host of other drivers who want to fight for their own reasons, and every driver in this pack knows that a victory here means so much, not just here in AOSC, but the wider variety, the very much various different sorts of series that Australian touring cars have to offer. And this first corner is the most deadly and dangerous of the lot. The last source hairpin, because you've got to get through there, then O Rouge and Radion. And from there, it is a run up the Kemmel Strait, which drivers know that Slipstream is so, so crucial and very easily used in these sorts of vehicles. What do these drivers have to offer? What do these drivers need to do to make sure that this works? ERT have peppered the front of the field, but the chasing pack wants to prove that they have everything that they've got to take it to the best team in the world at the moment when it comes to Australian touring cars. Two minutes comes up on top of the iRacing gantry. The lights will come on and 21 laps, one mandatory caution required starts. Now, good start there by Jordan Ross, but he's bogged down. There's Harley Haber going for the move. Immediately to the inside, Phil Self thought about going to the inside. He won't get that chance. So around the outside, Haber's going to try and go. And look at that, it bottlenecks up there in the middle of the pack. No contact there. But Phil Self now going for the race lead. He's got the inside as he now tries to get the outside line working. Up Rouge and Raddy on the teammates have to work this out together and almost come together as they go up through. Haber trying to round the outside of the Rouge. Gets a wiggle, holds it too wide. Ross is away. Filso has to give the room. As now behind that, they fight. As Sam Sutton tries to find a way through here. Kyle Stokes trying to go through. Let's go Noah's Ark as they make their way to the next section. Lay Coombe as they come up at the moment. Haber still fighting this one with Filso on the outside. Shades of All-Star shootout as now finally Haber holds second. That looked personal between the two. They doored each other on the way out of the source, and now Ooh. they've got the scuff marks to prove it, which could compromise the rest of their race. We've got Sutton and Stokes and Gilliam sizing up for a move in, into Ravage as well. Gilliam holding tough around the outside. James McKee has, has had a loop, unfortunately. So he'll be looking to recover from 12th place. It's not good for the for who was for our podium uh, finish up from last time out. No, it's not looking good at all, and it really is not. You drop 40 positions, 30-odd positions from there. It's never going to be helpful as the leaders head their way through the double left-hander of Puon at the moment. Look to try and get through the break. It's at Bo Albert as you've got Damien Johnson trying to get through. Kyle Stokes, though, we are focused on at the moment. Here's the replay of exactly what happened to cause it. So Bo Albert there down the inside. Oh, little bit of a not nice contact. And there's no runoff area to save yourself there at the second part of Lake Coombe. You have to be so careful there before Mal Medea. As we go back live to action here at the moment. And Phil Cell trying to rag on Harley Haber, who's desperately trying to stay with Jordan Ross, who's got that gap out almost to a second at the moment and we'll be very happy with progress here as the middle of this pack this front pack starts to think about how do they make position through someone who's done well is brady myers he massively extends there at the uh, blanchemont corner so you have to be careful phil still trying around the outside though in front and he can't quite find a move yet on young harley that first lap was perfect for Jordan Ross. He knows how to win races at this track, and he will be grinning from ear to ear, seeing them battle as Phil Cell on the inside again. And for, for the source, 
has the nose just ahead. Harley just about leaves in the room. They squeeze on the power. It's difficult to get the get the traction on there. And side by side for the second lap in a row, two from two, as they head into Eau Rouge Radion. Oh my goodness, this could spell disaster. As they go side by side, Harley oh. Hamer for the second time around the outside again. <laughs> oh, they oh, they, they touch it! Oh, no, they it's it's all gone wrong. In the wall. Phil Cell saved it. Haver hasn't. Haver's hit the wall. All of a sudden, it bottlenecks up as they try to avoid. Phil Cell got away with murder as they go through. Haver was too aggressive. That's what you can't afford as the championship leader. It's to get involved like that. He will have a fast repair and the safety car to come up. But now they fight for the podium as Andrew Gilliam on the outside. No, sorry. Yes, it is Andrew Gilliam against Sam Sutton. And all of a sudden, Zero tries to get in. Phil Cell trying to come back at Brady. Myers, the powder keg we expected to go off exploded on lap two. Uh, I, I don't know what Harley was thinking to be to be quite uh, frank there. He's clearly not thinking championship. He was so embroiled in that battle with Phil Cell, it's cost him dearly now. Look at the gap that Jordan Ross has now. It is enormous. It's headed by James Scott, followed by Sam Sutton, who was the winner, who was who was a joint winner with Jake Burton at Road Atlanta 500 in the Premier Series. Uh, Andrew Gilliam hanging tough in fourth place now with Kyle Stokes just in behind you. We've got Griffin Gardner, Brady Myers, a zero esports uh, teammates looking like they're ready to pounce. They're just waiting for that moment. And then Jared, who will be wounded after after that contact, I believe. But he will be he'll be fighting hard to get back towards the, the podium come the second half of this race. He certainly will, and of course you'll have to repair some of the damage. You also got doored at Jackie X by Brady Myers, who said, no, sir, I don't care if you think you're the greatest driver in the world. I don't care if you have a drive with Walkinshaw. I only want to get up positions, and I will do so which way that I can at the moment. So this is going to be very interesting as this race continues. Ross leads, Scott in second, Sutton now finds himself in third. Big lunge from Andrew Gilliam. He's overextended here. And can he get it slowed up here for the second part? That is a dive bomb and a half, and he's not got it sorted yet. He's got to fight this one now all the way to the lasso's hairpin. You can fight on the outside. Oh, they run doors all the way down towards turn number one. These drivers are not giving an inch at the moment. They're trying everything. Phil so goes incredibly deep and locks up as well. Sutton holds on to the position, but crucially, Phil Sell's big lunge has got himself Brady in the process, and here's Jack Boyd trying to get past Marlon McMullen. The aggro is through the roof in the opening laps as well. And look at look at Jack Boyd, who's seemingly come out of nowhere. Marlon McMullen uh, yields, which is probably the first time we've seen it all race, actually someone giving a position away. And look at the run that he's got on the Zero Esports car of Brady Myers. He could just, uh, he could have him well and truly done by, by Lacoon, but we've got oh. some more action up here. Side by side with Andrew Gilliam and Kyle Stokes. It looks like he'll get it just done. Nope, not quite. He can hold the outside here quite nicely. Oh, oh and there's another, another touch from Kyle Stokes. They still run side by side. Oh, this section of track is awesome, but very scary um, and line ball when you're when you're running side by side like that. Has another look at Ravage. Can't quite do it. Here comes Phil Cell trying to pick up the pieces on Griffin Gardner. Look at this. They're three wide on the exit of Ravage. This is amazing. Two by two into, into no name corner. Myers picks up the spot, forces Kyle Stokes all the way out, and here comes Phil Cell trying to pick up the pieces again. Oh, there's no love lost between any of them at the moment as they start fighting it out. And look at that, there's a bump from Phil Cell to Brady saying, you doored me at Jackie X. I'm going to give you a little bit of payback as you go through Pearl. And remember, instant points are so, so crucial around this track. You can so easily hit the limit. And I think a lot of drivers today may do if they're not too careful. They we're only on lap three. Remember, when they were coming up the Camel straight, Jack Boy behind took two tyres on the grass to pass Brady Myers, and that just shows you everyone is leaving everything out there on the track. The top three starting to break away, but that won't matter an iota because they know that there is a mandatory safety car coming at some point in the racing. Here is Phil Cell now trying to get around the outside of the Zero Esports car here of Griffin Garner. And Garner is going to have to let that one go as they head through the Blanchemont corner. Now Carl Stokes will want to try and freight train away through and get it done on the outside. But Griffin Gardner very much defending the line, but so much earlier on the brakes he is that Carl Stokes can breeze around the outside and pick up the position. So two loss in the space of two corners. Oh, well, it's, it's funny, this track I consider more of a strategist track rather than a racer's one, but the, the guys are just going out at hammer and tongs. You can actually stay with the cars in front trying to use the slipstream, but they don't care about that at the moment. They want the positions right now, so I'm curious to see where the guys in the midfield will find themselves by the end of this race if they keep their head on their shoulder. 
Well, crucially, the gap at the front is over four seconds now between Jordan Ross and James Scott, but Scott's making mistakes here. 2.22.2 that last time by. Lost eight tenths, count them, eight tenths to Sam Sutton. So Sutton is right on a charge and Prime looking to try and make a move for second position overall in this race. Battle behind us, Bo Albert under pressure. Here's Craig Jones looking to put his Mark 1 car, now the leading Mark 1 car, down the inside and position gained on the Logitech G old C Sports driver. Just like that, Craig Jones moves up into 12th. We've got Michael Healy in there as well with Thomas Hinn. So we've got some very experienced heads uh, in this battle. Healy shows the nose on Bo just about. Hits, hits the rear, there might have been a little bit of contact, might be a bit cheeky if he proceeds with that move. But then we got Tom Freer, who's also very good in qualifying, showing, having a good showing here today, but he, he is up, he's down two positions, sorry. So you want to correct that quickly. Hinsey to the inside of, of Healy, has another look at, um, at Bo, just tucks in. Freer picks up a spot on Healy, but here comes the crisscross um, through Puhon. Fantastic bit of racetrack. There's a little oh. bit of a checkup on the outside, but Healy just gets to position back. Look at Jacob Knight now looking looking in the background there. This is the next pack up, and I think everyone wants to dance, and everyone says it takes two to tango, so let's tango with so many that we have available with us. Phil Sell now looking at fourth place coming up, and it will be Andrew Gilliam has got to get by. Gilliam has been just a lightning bolt this season. He has been a spark that many people expect to kick on, fight for this championship. It's behind Griffin Gardner and Carl Stokes will continue to go at it as they head through Blodgemont. I think Gilliam's going to be just okay this run by as they get on the brakes into the bus stop chicane. And just like that, they all close up once again. Now it's a four-car pack battling out for second. Look at this, though. Stokes having to defend hard on that inside. Just gives no room there to Brady Myers and they are fighting as if there is nothing else in the world that they would want more than that one more position. Does Brady lunge at turn one? No, he doesn't. He'll have to play that waiting game. Look behind. Marlon going for the inside. Jack Boyd had to move out of the way. He was scared. He was going to get a bit of contact there. But McMullen is trying to get through on Brady Myers. Yeah, it looks like he was trying to avoid the GRM car and that was the opportunity needed to make the pass. So uh, here we go again. <laughs> it's nearly side by side through, through Radion. They wisely back out of that this time. Now, the Zero Esports car has a run on the car ahead, like Jared Philsell has a run on the Pursuit Sim Racing car. Actually, it looks like he's dropping back a little bit. That damage could be showing right now, so he's going he's gonna to be fighting with one hand behind his back because the draft effect is so powerful down the Camel Strait. With such an amazing passing opportunity at Lake Coombe, he's probably going to have to wait for his chance at the pit stop. Certainly is, but here comes Phil Cell down to the inside, trying to make the move on Andrew Gilliam. He covers so late, and Phil Cell's not going to like that. He gives him a shove to the rear quarter panel, two shoves to the quarter panel to get alongside. Do not block me, son. I am coming through, and there's nothing you can do, but he defends well through Jackie X. Now he's got the inside for Poo on the double left-hander, and the, all of a sudden, he's got a pinch low here as Gilliam, but he's not being given any room. There's contact between them again, and Gilliam has to yield. Sometimes you consider Phil Cell a bit of a docile kind of bloke after a race with the way he interviews. He's not docile now at the moment. He's been ruffled up by half the field at this point. So he wants to get on with it. He wants to start getting, throwing some punches back. And he knows how to throw these punches well. And he'll look like to, he will be a podium threat by the end of the race. No doubt. The battles continue on behind for the top 10. Stokes holding on well from sixth place. He hasn't moved. He's the only car alongside um, Griffin Gardner not to have uh, moved up or down from there. Uh, qualifying positions which could be considered a bit of a win seeing the moving that we've seen so far but Johnston tucked in behind the wing of Griffin Gardner heading into Blanchemont might be sizing up a move into the bus stop certainly will be trying to get it going so what can Jack Boyd do to make that move as they get through Blanchemont and now here comes the push as they get themselves just slightly up the hill once again to this uber ultra chicane big lunge down the inside trying to make that move then from Jack Boyd but it's very well scouted there by Zero Esports and the more they fight the more that Zero's teammate comes in that being Brady Myers into the action so Boyd has got to try and get going pit window very much open here on lap six of the event no one going through contact between Gilliam and Phil Cell, but there's a redress there from Gilliam. He doesn't want to make it happen that way. They touch into the last source hairpin. That will both cost them a lot of time, as now that will bring Kyle Stokes 
slowly back into the fight. They go up the hill through Radion, and uh, they now look to try and make that push. Phil Cell just having a little wiggle as they go through. Now the front two there in second and third having their scrap, but here comes Jack Boy down to the inside of Griffin Gardner who can't defend it. Doesn't have to take to the grass this time. Uh, he gives him plenty of room. He's hitting them. He's probably a little bit too over in, uh, on this side of the track. He, yeah, oh, he no, could not go Phil deep enough from there. They've hit each other again. This time it's come at this next section of track. So let's see what's happened here between them. It was just so late there from uh, Gilliam. He's given him a tap. And just like that, I think this has got incredibly personal. Look at this. Kyle Stokes down the inside of Gilliam. All of a sudden, Phil Sell is not going to be too happy. And, well, he's just had half the field. Oh, no, oh, no, 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 Great save from Kyle Stokes. That's a fantastic save through Jackie X. But he loses three positions for his troubles. And I think Jared Philsell's just woken up and gone, well, this is the race from hell for me at the moment. But look at this. Stokes try to come back on the Zero Esports driver. This is madness at the moment here at Spa. Anyone trying not to get involved in a battle, but now has had a problem. We've got a replay up on screen with the contact between Gilliam and, and Philsell. Oh, that is a big old punt there. Just got in too, too deep under brakes. Not sure if it doubt there was any malice there. Look at the checkup from from Stokes when he arrives on the scene at full, at full tilt, nearly causes an almighty shunt. So here he goes, under brakes, just, yeah, just, well, just couldn't quite pull it up. Decent save from Phil Cell, comes back onto the track and then, then Stokes arrives with a full head of steam, just keeps it out of the back of Gilliam. He's on for second position though, as Sam Sutton tries to make the move here at the bus stop chicane, he can't get it done here. On lap six out of 21, no decision yet to come down onto pit road, get something working out at the moment. Scott there in second, just holding off well at the moment, keeping it as ERT one and two at the moment at the front of this field. So this pack from fourth place, let's get this, is now all the way back to 17th position with Jacob Knight. They have fought so hard between each other that this has just become a pack of 13. Get that, or even more. Sorry, a pack of almost 14, 15 drivers all looking at a podium. And who would have said that after six laps? We never say that after six laps. <laughs> so that's simply amazing. It's really hard to pull away at this circuit if you can maintain the draft, but all that battling broke the field up quite nicely for our for our front runners and has congested the midfield absolutely incredibly looking a little bit further back outside the top tw uh, 30 that we haven't really paid much attention to probably for good reason no offense guys but we're looking at the likes of matt stratford who's picked up i think uh, 17 positions from 49th michael telianchic who is at the back of the field is up into 34th will probably be looking to make a strategy call well, here's Stratford trying to make it three wide on the Kemmel down the inside. And just like that, Dylan De Bono trying to fight with it. There's Josh Pickett, bit of contact between them as they now make their way to Malmedy, trying to make this one work. More contact on the exit, but on the outside line it is Dylan De Bono who will pick it up, or will he? Because Stratford is going to come straight back at him down the inside at Ravage, and that is position sell. Ah, oh, fantastic move from Stratty. Wasn't taking a no from an answer there. Jack Boyd having another, uh, having a, continuing his great scrap here with Andrew Gilliam. So it looks like he's gone a little bit more racy now, up from up from ninth on the grid. So this is more of the Jack Boyd that we're used to seeing. It certainly is more of the Jack Boyd that you're used to seeing. And now all of a sudden, look at how desperate these drivers are as they line up file a, a single file trying to pick up one position here one position there it's all it is it's the battle of the one positions don't count harley haber out of this race either remember he was involved in that lap two incident with jared phil so he's there in the 44th but he's putting in some nice consistent time 50 seconds off the race pace with a mandatory caution could still come back and score some very decent points if aggressive Harley comes back into fruition. On the brakes they go into the bus stop. No change of position from those. Jared Philsell pits early. That's a very crucial strategy because he pits early, gets his pit stop out of the way. A caution now puts everyone else in the field under pressure. Following in is Damian Johnstone, as is Michael Healy, as is Tom Fritz coming and get the early stop done. Yeah, I think this is a good call. So when the safety car comes out, they are ready to go. But if it comes out late, it could hurt them. But I think J Jared's uh, hand was forced a little bit there with the traffic and the damage that he had. 
looking to pot potentially stretch this uh, this fuel mileage. We're looking at the zero esports cars tucked in tucked in behind each other. A little bit quiet at the moment, but we know they're pretty fast. Kyle Stokes he had a little bit of a he was roughed up recently in uh, earlier in the race, but I think he's got the long game hat on at the moment. He needs to get back into the groove. He's got Mullen like Mullen behind him who will be keen to pounce uh, after a fairly qu uh, quiet start by his standards. And through all of this, the one person we haven't really talked about is your race leader, 143, Jordan Ross. He's just walked away from everyone at the moment, five seconds ahead of this battle for seconds, still going on between James Scott and Sam Sutton. I wonder if the military man is deciding that he wants to save a bit of fuel in his tank before he goes out firing shells because he knows just what it takes to get there. He knows there's a mandatory caution coming up. He knows he doesn't have to chase down Jordan Ross. I might as well save the fuel behind James Scott now because when it comes to my stop, I will be quicker when it comes to the lane. Yes, agreed. And it'll be difficult to pull away even if he does have a bit of a pace advantage. Jack Boyd might be thinking the same while he's sitting behind uh, Andrew Gilliam. And then we've got the, the pack behind, which is significantly decreased from the 17 odd cars we had before. So we're seeing the, the race settle into a rhythm. It only took eight laps of the two, two minute 20 racetrack. Eight laps. So it's taken a quarter of an hour for drivers to work out. Oh, yeah. This is a, an hour-long race, not a one-lap sprint shootout, which I think many people have been caught into that mindset of thinking. Jack Boyd trying to stay with Andrew Gilliam here in the battle for fourth positions. They make their way to Blanchemont once again out on track, and you can see just how aggressive they are, down to 213 kilometers an hour through Blanchemont, and in vehicles which are effectively uh, glorified uh, cars, they are really in uh, a world of paces. Into the pits come Sam Sutton and Jordan Ross, so that gives the lead then away uh, to your race leaders as now in comes Gilliam and Jack Boyd and McMullen. Little bit of an issue for Craig Jones trying to get onto the lane. Slightly holds up Bo Albert. In comes Knight and McKnight and Bird and Kim and Smart, Varga, Bowden, Morris. Everyone coming in. I think Morris may have just hit the wall coming into the lane. Yeah, don't quite have a vision of that, but that was very much a game of follow the leader. We saw this happen at Sebring. The the leader pitted and everyone followed suit. So I'm a little surprised Jordan's felt the need to come in now. I'm not sure. I doubt it was in response to Jared, but he had margin to, to certainly react. I'm guessing he's covering off the safety car. But look at the traffic he's about to exit out into. This That's not good at all for Jordan. That's not a good play whatsoever. So he's going to have to fight his way through traffic that still needs to pit to maintain the lead that Ooh. he had and then survive Ooh. the safety car. Big news. Phil Cell's had a long stop here. And Jack Boyd, oh, he's just behind. But Gilliam's got the jump on Phil Cell by a good margin. Michael Kirkham between the match. A good two seconds. I think Phil Cell's overfueled it slightly here. Sam Sutton a mile away here in all of this. And Jordan Ross will be off with the fairies in the lead of this race. So all change at the moment. And the next question becomes, when does the caution happen here? Because there are drivers here out there. Lap nine, it can go as anywhere as late as lap 14, lap 15. And we know that this is going to be a later caution than what maybe some are thinking. This is mid-stage of the race right now. This could be very interesting to see who's going to come down in. As things stand, both zero cars will be under pressure, as will James Scott, who now has to cover the move. With oh, no yeah, Joshua Pickett spun at, at a... Rivage, he was parked in the middle of the road, cars scrad scattered to get out of the way. Fortunately, no contact. Wow, so lucky, lucky, lucky Josh Pickett as we try and get ourselves then a replay of exactly what has happened there. It was a disastrous little moment there as Josh Pickett ending up getting turned around. We've got it up on screen. There's a caution and what a time for it as well. Drivers are now in so much trouble as they go through. This is the replay. So he gets on the brakes. Oh, he lost it all on his own. And he's lucky nobody else has come together with him. He was spread eagle on the apex of the corner. All the leaders getting around there nicely. But we have a caution and what a time for it. Everyone in the lead running themselves into trouble out on track. As I just see one vehicle retire from the race. And that, I believe, is Dylan De Bono, who has just pulled it off and out of this race. So this is a huge change into how this race is going to work. Because all of a sudden, James Scott has been caught by the safety car as, has, uh, as there was a blow up there going on. As has Myers, Stokes, Garner, and everyone saying, go, go, go. And that includes Harley Haber in all of this, remember, who is just behind Tom Freer out on track. So still in position to try and get some points.
Well, I think I need to take back what I said about the Jordan Ross strategy. If he stayed out, he'd be caught like his teammate, James Scott, who will have to cycle through the pit lane under this yellow, and it will be painful watching the entire field stream past. So Jordan Ross should resume the race lead from from here. So that's worked out nicely for him. But there's so much traffic that needs to sort itself out. So there's, there's still a lot of organizing uh, that's going to happen when we uh, cycle back to green flag racing. Well, more importantly than that, and this is crucial because this is a very short pit lane here, Ross, and that's going to mean that that stop time and that lane time, very crucially, is going to be really, really small. So those positions that are expected to be lost aren't really as much as what would be expected in the first place. Drivers who are expected to lose out in all of this, Scott, Myers, Stokes, Gardner, Hinz, Goosen, Stratford, Taliantic, Evans, Vela, and Hender, 11 drivers at the front who did not come in to make those stops and expect a handful of others to come down in at exactly the same point as well. A slow, le uh, a quick lane time, though, is going to be so crucial here, though, Ross, because of that fact that it still brings people back into this race. You're absolutely right. We saw it last week at um, at Sebring with, I think, with uh, Chris Barnes, and I forget the name of the other driver who was caught out by the safety car, but they started, I think, about 28th, was about, it was well and truly entrenched in the top 10, came out still about 25th, so there was still a net gain for them. So we've got nearly half the field in that scenario here, so they'll actually be probably quite pleased with how that's turned out, presuming they can get out, I guess, in the top 25, top 30. And then, of course, we'll see the usual guys who were battling up front uh, resume the lead of the race. So let's talk instant points for a moment, because I, for the first time in a very long time, have them available to me. Jared Philsell's up on 16 out of 25, so he's not got much to play with. Brady Myers stuck at halfway. We're not halfway through this race, as is Bo Albert, Jack Boyd likes of Kyle Stokes, Griffith Garner up there with a lot of points to their names as well. Surprised Andrew Gilliam's only on six because of just how aggressive he's been in the early stages. But Phil Sell is the big worry on the incident point fact because he's got to make sure that he's not fighting with drivers. Problem is, he's middle of the pack. He's fighting with drivers. Uh, to be honest, I think he'd rather just have the race. It, it, the, worst, the worst thing that could happen is he's taking points um, away from... Jordan Ross's rival so I just I'd, I'd if I was Jared I'd just send it I think that's what he's proven what he's going to do tonight well we will see the pit lane will open this time by is the pace behind the iRacing Porsche first safety car finds itself heading towards Blanchemont coming out of corner Paul Frey it's been a lightning start to this race it's been electric in every sense of the word as they will all come down onto the lane and make sure that their stop and their strategy will work out in play. If you want to net predict who will be at the front of the field, it will be Jordan Ross, but it will now be Sam Sutton in second, who's worked well on the strategy. Gilliam will be net third and Phil Sell net fourth. So again, Jarrah's got to get past Andrew Gilliam, which never ever going to be an easy challenge with the way that those drivers have been fighting it hard today. So lap 10 here of 21 half distance score complete already as they make their way through the bus stop chicane and watch how many drivers peel in the first one two three four five six seven eight just about tally nine ten vehicles come in jordan ross decides that he wants to stay out he's got to stay in the line in the pace that goes on as they look to go through and into pit row as now that will be very very crucial they've got to pass that line and get themselves going. So this is going to be very telling in terms of they're down on the lane. How quick are the stops going to be, Ross? Uh, well, hopefully they've decided to, to take into account that it's going to be a shorter run to the end with that safety car. So eyes on James Scott right now. We've seen Thomas Hins off the jacks. There's Brady Myers off the jacks. He could oh, jump wow. James Scott, and he has. That is a horrible stop for James Scott there. Kyle Stokes beats Gr Griffin Gardner off, off the line. Tally Antich files in behind. Wow, that's a great stop there from Brady Myers. He has beaten everyone, and he will have to come out behind McMullen, behind Michael Healy, I think, and dropping back and back and back. So uh, that's going to be about where is uh, that I'm going to be having to line up to, and that is behind David Kinman in the end, just by the nature of where that line is. So it's a great start, but it always drops back when you come out of pit road here. So this is going to be a huge change. So 
That was uh, a case of position loss for James Scott in that stop. That was a great stop by Brady Myers. Almost too great, some may argue. This is now how the field looks. It is. Jordan Ross who leads it one. Sam Sutton in second. Andrew Gilliam third. Jared Philsell fourth. Then it's Boyd and Johnstone. This is a great race at the moment for GRM. But Mullen in seventh. Healy in eighth. Craig Jones in ninth. And it is Bo Albert who rounds out the top ten. McKnight in eleventh. Myers twelfth. Then it's Kinman, Jacob Knight, James Scott, Christian Smart, and the likes of Stokes, Hins, Gardner, Stovold, peppering the top 20. Where is Harley Haber in all of this? I hear some people ask because this is important for the championship and how this is going to play out. And 14th uh, is what we're here. 40th, sorry, is what we are hearing at the moment. So that is going to be a little ways down, a lot of work. Left to be done for Harley Haber, but if anyone can do it, he can. And if he can just get 15 positions in the final half of this race, he'll be sorted with a solid points haul. Not a great points haul, Ross, but a solid points haul will do. Well, it's going to have to do. He put himself in this position, quite frankly. But I think he's going to enjoy this challenge here. I, I doubted him last time out at Sebring, and he proved me wrong, taking away an amazing uh, win. So he'll be looking to pass heaps and heaps of cars in the remaining 11 12 laps noticing again with that stop with brady myers it's two weeks in a row that um the pit stop has been an absolute um master stroke for the number 22 so it's gained him a couple of net positions because it does put him a, a fair way ahead of um of james scott who of course had a slightly slower stop so james scott will have to work hard to get past the two cars ahead of him just to get back to brady myers and i think that's a huge win for brady I think it is. I think he went to the Ross Rizzo School of Pit Stops. I don't know about you, but uh, you have to say at this stage, Jordan Ross has been in control. He's led every single lap of this race. He has been uncontested since last source on the opening lap of this one. Sam Sutton, the military man, wants to prove different, as does Gilliam and Phil Sell. Like, so Jack Boyd wants to get in on the action. Maybe even Marlon McMullen, who will gain points in the championship if things stay like this. Again, consistency his big trump card at the moment as they make their way towards Blanchemont and of course that fabled bus stop chicane which had so many iterations my favorite was the late 90s uh, edition where it was effectively the fastest left right left that you had to deal with in the world which then changed to a slower section and then the iteration that we know today but this is going to be a very interesting restart a lot of drivers wanted to prove a lot of things and they've got to bunch up and try and make sure that they get the run that they so desperately want we've seen how these restarts have been pivotal in racing like this in aosc this season they have been the biggest points the sore points of contention i racing porsche first safety car dives down onto the lane long long hold from jordan ross who's got to let that safety car hit the lane before the green flag drops and he's going to go incredibly late here incredibly incredibly late as they cross the line has jordan has chad boyd past phil cell before the start finish line keep an eye on that on the brakes they go but mullen's going to take it more wide into turn number one and he gets everyone contact between gilliam and phil cell we said it would happen but just like that but mullen's got aggressive he's up to third sutton under pressure now trying to apply that pressure still more contact as gilliam is gone he's absolutely gone as they make their way up the hill for the next time and lap 12 and just like that the race has turned again so it simply reset the angle levels unfortunate for gilliam who got spat out like a like a used dummy there look at um sutton having to defend from mcmullen who goes deep around the outside nope not quite sutton doing a good job to file back back in front so jack boyd into fourth place um jared filso with with a Holden Cruz uh, back into fifth place, I believe, and Michael Healy uh, pulling the classic trick strat, <laughs> having a quiet, quiet run, but he's got a bit of damage to contend with for the final part of the race. Yeah, and crucially enough, he is right up there and having a strong run in sixth place. Seventh behind him is Bo Albert. He said he's not good at this vehicle. I'd say otherwise, Brady Myers now in eighth after all of that. Keep an eye on him. He's got a lighter fuel tank surely than everybody else but he is right in the fight 
at the moment. Sutton pushes a little wide through Puan, and it's this middle sector section of the lap where Jordan Ross is putting that advantage down and hammering away, and he's able to do so. He's already got a gap of about four tenths of a second, and he'll be happy with that because it will only get larger and larger and larger the more they fight. But Mullen having to go defensive now. There's Jack Boyd and Jared Filsar, who now only has half an instant point for every lap here. He's stuck with five left. Any major contact and he's left with one incident to survive the race and that'll be music to jordan ross's ears because he'd struggle to find anyone out uh, to griffin gardner with issues so the zero sports driver his race coming undone at the... well here's a replay keep an eye on this heading himself through to stavolo on the brakes he goes and heading through this section, he's always oh, just gone straight off there. I think that's technical. That looks like it's a, uh, something that's not very nice that you don't want to deal with. Let's go back live because they're fighting in the middle of the pack. David Kimman trying to have a go at this one. There's one of the gone road cars trying to get in. Christian Smart. And there's James Scott trying to fight around the outside. Scott's defending here. There's Hins and Kinman and Stobold and Bowden all there trying to have their own race in the lower half of this field. And they're all having a wonderful scrap at the moment as they continue through. Phil Cell is through though on Jack Boyd. That's crucial though, in terms of the battle going on as Phil Cell now goes back into fourth positions. They head up through Eau Rouge and now into Radion once again and trying to make that charge. But again, Jack Boyd will want to come straight back. But Marlon McMullen, the great equalizer in this battle as it's also on for the lead. Jordan Ross for the first time today goes defensive up into Lake Coombe. Here comes Sam Sutton. He can't get it done. Phil Cell, though, up into third. Great spontaneous move from, from Phil Cell. You can see Sutton's also, oh, he, oh, mistake from Ross, mistake from Jordan Ross. And this gives Sutton a chance at revanche. Nope, Jordan Ross crosses back to the inside. So now, th now this is not what Jordan Ross wanted. He was keen, he was keen to get out into the air, but just a slight mistake, I think, through the source has opened the door once again for everyone behind him by the look of it. He won't be able to break away. Jared still seems to have pace despite driving a Holden Cruise. And here comes Marlon McMullen. He's got pressure from Jack Boyd with, with Michael Healy in tow. I don't think McMullen's got the pace, and that is very, very crucial. I think he's going to have to yield here to Jack Boyd, who is definitely quicker. Definitely knocking on the door. Goes hard to the inside. Oh, there's no gap there. No gap there at Fania. You're not going to make the move there. And he doesn't. So Marlon McMullen with the massive defense. He's trying to hold on to every point. Try and get back in the championship to Harley Haber. A Harley Haber, mind you, who finds himself now in 31st place. He's up nine positions, getting himself around Jacob Knight. That's for 29th, so he's got another one here. Haber is making great progress through the field. This is mature driving now as they battle it out again. As now again, McMullen under pressure as they head themselves to the Blanchemont corner and Jack Boyd trying to find a way through can't get there now Phil Sell's on the back it's a pack of three for the race win with each defense Boyd is going to get more more and more uh, frustrated with McMullen who's gone way too deep he's overcommitted so is Boyd here comes here comes Haber uh, not Haber um Brady Myers <laughs> to the inside of <laughs> my bad Brady Myers had a look at, at Michael Healy couldn't quite get it done but each defensive move that McMullen puts on jo on Jack Boyd will only frustrate Boyd it, it means the top three will just continue to skip away another a no shine by Michael Healy on Jack Boyd can't quite get it done so now now Jack Boyd really needs to work hard to catch back up to McMullen, pass him, and then get onto the leading train of three who are checking out now. They are, and they're checking out so much as Phil Sell has caught Sam Sutton and Jordan Ross. Phil Sell's gone into race mode, and he knows he has, and he knows he's got to make some moves. He was the fastest lap guy in this field last time by. Has a little look down to the inside. He's not going to find it here as they remain line astern as Michael Healy goes down the inside of Jack Boyd and gains a position and that's this is what McMullen wanted he wanted to check the pack up so they fight amongst themselves it's a pack of rabid Wolverines at the moment and uh, Bo Albert there in the background is just going to lift off of Brady Myers and say I don't want to get involved with that one not here at Ravage I'm not that aggressive yet look at Phil Salvo in the battle for second he's all over Sam Sutton and he may have just picked up the run here heading to the next left here at Poo on the double left hander but look at this it is slightly being held off defensive by Sutton and this is giving Jordan Ross the breakaway well almost it's giving him a little bit of breathing room but it's probably only a matter of time until Phil Cell gets past he wants them to get really deeply embroiled in a battle um, 
Haber and Phil Cell esque or Gilliam and Phil Cell esque or else it might not be enough for him just to check out yet. Phil Cell really showing why he's he's absolutely a master in these cars. He's just so late on the brake, so confident in the turn in uh, with, with that car. Sutton is probably more driving in the mirrors now rather than looking at Jordan Ross ahead. Uh, the draft that he needs so desperately from Jordan Ross slowly sip, slipping away, which means it means uh, he's more ah, sorry, he's less um, has less defense against Phil Cell behind him. Well, Phil Cell knows he's got to make these moves and he's got to make them quickly. He's got six laps to go. Uh, he's got seven laps to go, sorry. And the next time they cross the line and now every instant point matters at this stage. As Phil Cell now only has four left. He cannot afford to make contact in any way, shape or form with Sutton in front. He has got to be so patient in the way that he makes this move happen. And that is the big issue that they've got. Sam Sutton, just for context, isn't in any worries at all in terms of incidents. He's happy with where he is. Phil Cell again, wide line taken as he can't afford to make any forms of contact. Wide goes Healy though at last sort and this is going to allow Jack Boyd in and also Myers and Albert and on the back now is Kyle Stokes who's made some great progress through this field. John Stone in the pack behind fighting hard with Scott and McKnight and Hins going at it together. Stovold, Smart, Tally and Chich remember started 48. He's 16th at the moment. What a recovery he's having for his championship here comes Jack Boy. So to the outside of Michael Healy, he it's going to be tough to round him up around the outside here, but he'll be able to hold it for the next couple of corners. No, Healy does give him the position. Now Brady Myers sneaking in behind Michael Healy. Oh, runs a little bit wide there, does Brady Myers. So might not be able to line up anything just yet into, into revise. Kyle Stokes also getting Morgan ahead Johnstone. of Bo Albert. Look at Damien Johnstone because here is James Scott who's finally found a way through. Johnstone immediately back to the inside and lunges down that inside here and there's no room and he just tries to force a way through but that's great driving from Scott giving just racing room there on that inside line and able to hold the position. That is perfect driving around the outside. No, but nice in the wall. More contact. Off there goes one of the hyperdrive cars in all of that and it's just skipping away through. It was Stovold who got involved. Varga will skip through as well. More positions for Haber. Oh, that was that was a frightening incident. We have a replay on screen. So, so, oh. so we see McKnight on the outside of, I believe that's Stovall. Stovall has just a slight overlap, but not oh, just that weird contact that forces McKnight to drive straight, can't get, leave the room, and it all escalates extremely quickly. Somehow, a couple of cars just getting through while others not so lucky. Yeah, a few drivers not lucky, and Michael Healy loses a position there to Brady Myers. I wonder if there's damage to Healy's vehicle because he's really struggling at the moment, and now Kyle Stokes will sense uh, a little bit of weakness here and try and bounce. Goes to the inside to try and make this move, and on the brakes, he's going to be able to get it there. So Kyle Stokes gets one. Does Bo Albert follow? No, he can't quite get there as he tries to get down the inside around the outside of the bus stop. Not quite working now. Five laps to go. Top three split by 1.1 seconds. Sam Sutton half a second back off Jordan Ross, and Phil Cell just being patient, just waiting for the right time to go out there and to strike. And crucially, Sutton took two tenths out of Jordan Ross that last time by. He's starting to gear up to think about winning this race outright. It's going to be difficult. Jordan Ross has led every single lap of this race so far. And it's going to be a tall order to try and pick up this victory. It's everywhere in this field. Now tries to gain some positions. Haber, though, now up to 24th place and has Matt Stratford in the sight. Yep, so Haber, as we thought, he's cutting through the through the uh, field like a warm knife through butter. He's got a bit of a gap to have to make his way uh, up towards the next group of cars, but he should pick them up pretty quickly once he gets there. They're battling themselves, and we've seen how this how this unfolds. Either Carnage or the cars all check up quite quickly. Here we go, the 543 on the inside of Simon Bella into Lacombe gets it done quite nicely. So a little bit more time as, as that pushes them back towards Haber. A little bit more time and another look down to the inside. That's not going to work. Now the other hyperdrive car, Kane Hewson, wants to try and make a move here. 
on the brakes down the inside. Can he get it sorted? No. Uh, Eau Rouge Radion, it was a case the two hyperdrive cars were fighting side by side. That would have given kittens to Christopher Kessie. He would have not been happy with those two going at it too wide like that. But Veer of both vehicles failing to finish. But now Haber very firmly on the rear of this pack. Back up, though, to the front of the pack, which heads through Stavolo, Jordan Ross, Sam Sutton, Jared Philsell. All there, all scrapping, all very much happy to keep things. Line of Stern, now Jack Boyd, and Marlon McMullen becomes the next fight because McMullen's had three, four laps where he's been able just to ride on his own. Now he's got to go back into defensive mode again. Number 85 has to because Jack Boyd, last time by, took seven tenths of a second out of him. And just crucially, Jack Boyd is on the brink of being able to break the draft of Brady Myers. But I think once he catches McMullen, we'll have the old the old four-way battle that we saw just a few moments ago. Michael Healy, yeah, looking like he is dropping back now. Bo Albert will be enjoying every moment of this, fighting, fighting a stalwart for a top 10 at Spa. So he'll be absolutely loving this. Great drive from both so far. Uh, James Scott looks through. Oh, look at this from, from Thomas Hins. Just pulls it up in time before going into the rear of Damian Johnson. He didn't miss him that time. Got him square on the exit on, on the main straight. Oh, big contact in the background. That's Andrew Gilliam forcing away through Rob Bowden. You started 22nd. Be gone, sir, he says as he goes through. As now down the inside goes Steve, uh, of Stephen Varga giving the position away to David Kinman and will lose another one to Gilliam, who is really brute forcing his way through. Oh, they touch on the exit as well. Gilliam has gone off the rails here today. He has lost it as he is wanting to fight with absolutely everyone at every single point. Here comes Jack Boyd, though. He's going to have to go around the outside here to get past Marlon McMullen, who covers back on the line. And again, is no way, no shape to make a way through here for Jack Boyd. Hinsey on the inside of Damian Johnston heading into Lacombe. Gets it done quite nicely. Johnston doesn't fight that too hard. They've both got bigger fish to fry. If they play their cards right, they can catch um, James Scott and the wounded um, Michael Healy, who's battling with Bo Albert. So a smart move there from Hins and Johnston. Boyd finally, finally makes the move on Mullet McMullen. <laughs> it seemed to happen very, very quickly. But now he can try and take off after the top three, but might, might run out of time here. It was a lock up into Ravage, and that was all that Jack Boy needed an opportunity. And that's a position gone now for Marlon McMullen. And that advantage gets worse and worse because Harley Haber at the moment is trying to find a way past Matt Morris once again and Stratford. So he's lost positions on this lap. Haber's run into trouble. He's lost positions. He's not in the best place. But you're leading three, remember? And they've got four to go at the line are all together within a second. And Sam Sutton, I think, is waiting, waiting for the last lap to make that move. Phil Cell can't go out there and be aggressive. He's got to be pinpoint and wait for mistakes because he knows that one wrong move and he is gonzo. Jordan Ross, massive track extend through Blanchemont. He feels the pressure. Yeah, I think Sutton, I think you're right. Sutton is waiting for the moment and then Phil Cell is waiting on Sutton. So you can imagine it's all going to explode in probably the last two laps when Sutton makes the roof, Phil uh, makes the move. Phil Cell will pounce in response as well. So smart driving by these guys so far. But Jordan Ross, he's been absolutely perfect all night so far with probably ex the exception of that track extension and that lockup right there. But it'd be hard to argue that he does not deserve this win, but he's going to have to fight so hard for it. Well, now all of a sudden it's offense to defense for Sam Sutton because Jared Philsell has just put himself within a tenth and a little bit. It was a poor run from Sam Sutton, the military man, as he now pulls himself through Radion and up the Kemmel straight for the 18th time. And all of a sudden, Phil Sell's trying to stay in that line and trying to make sure that run works. We know Phil Sell's good on fuel. He overfueled it. He lost two positions in the safety car period. But now on the brakes, they go into the Lake Coombe complex. And just like that, Jordan Ross has a little bit of breathing room. This lap, pressure behind. Brady Myers defending from Kyle Stokes in the Triple Eight car. Of course, Triple Eight, a lot of heritage in Australian touring cars at the moment, but still not quite able to make that move happen as every position now becomes a case of a massive, massive fight. Harley Haber trying to deal with Matt Morris at the moment. Still can't quite make the move. Will he look to the inside this time? Yes, he will. He forces a nose down to that inside line. It will be fought every step of the way by the Velocity Magazine driver and still held very nicely there by Morris. Yeah, Morris won't give this up easily. In fact, he'll be inspired by this fight to, uh, against Harley Haber, who is, of course, 
one of the form guys. Morris will want to prove himself. He is a fantastic driver in his own right, but he misses the apex by a long way with that inside lockup. Here comes Harley Haber on the outside. Not quite enough room to make it work. Crisscross into Buon. Is that on? It will be on as as the traction just does not work for, for Matt Morris. He'll be a sitting duck as Harley Haber goes to the inside here. He can hold it around the outside. Oh. Harley doesn't give him the option. Off the road he goes. And now Matt Morris might be inspired to fight a little bit harder as he gets driven straight off the track now. Oh, and you can probably see what's going to happen here. Overcommits it to the inside. Oh, we'll just pull it up. Wow, that is... Oh, that was that was getting personal very, very quickly. It was, and so you hate to see that sometimes, but that was about the very, very limit of what I would call clean racing. Or you could even say that it was just on the fringes of we're racing now to hit each other. But three laps to go at the front of the field, and all of a sudden, Jordan Ross has got a gap. It's now three quarters of a second to Sam Sutton. He's got to pull that back because he's worrying too much about Phil Cell behind. He's just got to drive as if he's not there, and that's crucial for 47. Of course, former TTL Esports driver, served his military service, was away for a while, coming back. Down the inside goes Carl Stokes at the last horse hairpin. He gets past Brady Mars with a little bit of contact to boot as well. So that's very crucial in terms of Stokes. He's in the championship, remember? Mr. Consistency up there with a good finish. Now, Brady Myers has got to come back at him very, very quickly as they make their way up through Eau Rouge and Rally on towards the Lake Coombe section up the Camel. Yeah, Carl Stokes has been both punished and rewarded for his patience tonight, but he's back up into into seventh place as Brady Myers can't decide which way he wants to go, tries to fake him. Carl Stokes having none of it and simply takes his racing line. Good, calm driving from Carl Stokes. He might struggle to pull away here, though, because we know Brady's quite fast, so he's going to be embroiled in this battle probably for the rest of the race. I saw just before... Matt Stratford having a look at the um, at the two hyperdrive cars. So again, Chris Kessie probably sweating a little bit. He's already lost a car um, in this race already with a big, big shunt. He doesn't want to lose another, especially when you've got some aggressive drivers and some low percentage moves being pulled back there. Lost one, he's lost two. He's lost Tom Freer as well. Let's not forget that. We did catch that one on camera but now all of a sudden this battle for the lead is a battle for second because sam sutton is on the cusps of a second he's got to be careful here he's got to have just a solid run or see a mistake from jordan ross because at the moment there's nothing left for him if he's going to continue it like this keep an eye a little further back because michael Taliancic. Get this! He's fighting for 12th place at the moment with Damian Johnstone, maybe in 11th with Thomas Hines. He's having a massive day in the triple seven. He has got up an astonishing 25 positions at the moment. He has been world class. 35, sorry, positions. He has been world class at picking and choosing his moments. And Johnstone and Hines are next. You kind of feel like this was premeditated from Michael Taliantic. He had 20 minutes to put in, put in a decent lap, but couldn't quite do it. But he is a, he is more of a strategist as much as he is a racer, sorry. Um, not so much a qualifier, but I think he, he kind of planned this. Um, while I'm impressed, I'm not really that surprised, but still fantastic drive from the 777. Unfortunately, his, um, uh, I guess, cool-headedness didn't quite rub off on um, on his younger teammates. While they are faster, they are both. neither of them are going to score crucial points that they need to get into this championship fight. Two laps to go here at Spa-Francorchamps. The battle for the race win. Days, the gap does not move, but Phil Sell now starts to get the pressure on. He wiggles all the way through Radion. He's got to start thinking about making a move here if he wants to get this victory. He's probably thinking, I don't think Sam Sutton can catch him. At the same time, Jordan Ross has points for his championship. I'm out here getting practice for the E-Series, for Walkinshaw. But he heads himself now through the right and left of Leku. And all three of them know that they are some of the best drivers that the world has to offer. And they head themselves now to the next part of track, Ravage. And of course, the corner which formerly had no name, Jackie X. So for a certain moment, you feel now that Sam Sutton's got to get aggressive here. Got to pull that gap back down because anything short of that is going to be trouble. Varga in a bit of trouble as well as almost contact there with Phil's, uh, with Kim and, and Gilliam. Oh, he's back to Phil Cell here. He's trying down the inside here and he's trying it at Buon. Has he got it around the outside? This could be the death knell in the coffin if they keep fighting. Sutton's going to fight him all the way back. They continue their way all the way to the next right left hander that comes up and down the inside all oh, bit of contact between them but Sutton survives 
Yeah, Sutton just got a little bit of a wiggle out of Jackie X, and that kind of spelt doom for both of them, because now look at Watch Jordan Ross just point. skipping away a little bit. Yeah, Jordan Ross needs to be careful here about where he chooses to extend the track and make this move, but it looks like Jordan Ross could be long gone. Finally, he gets the respite needed, while Sam Sutton has a huge fight on his hands with Jared Philsell for the podium. Jared Philsell has an incident point to fight with. He's got nothing left. Remember, championship leader Harley Haber, he's only got two instant points of his own. Uh, now, Jared Philsell's got to drive this lap clean as a whistle and make the move. Thinks about the inside, he can't get it. White flag comes out though for Jordan Ross. He's got a lap to go, a lap to survive, a lap to make no mistakes. A second becomes the order of the day, the fight of the day, as Sam Sutton looks to prove himself as an Aussie Touring Cars driver against the man signed for Walkinshaw, Jared Philsell, on the brakes into last source. No chance, no dice. You're not gonna get the move like that. And Philsell's gotta do it up the Kemmel if he wants to make this work. Fourth position is okay for Jack Boyd, but Mullen there in fifth, may have to worry about Kyle Stokes come the end of this race. The top 10 pretty much secured, except these top two fighting it out together. Second and third even, I should say. A good run for Sam Sutton. Phil Sell cannot afford any mistake at all as he now pushes big defense line and he knows that he will not catch heading through this section the gap is a second and a half now for jordan ross and extending more towards two as they now get on the brakes into lake home and now they start thinking about which is the best way to make this move phil self thinks well if i'm going to consolidate a points finish it's going to be third place it's going to be good enough let's look back though because kyle stokes is now all over the back of the privateer, Marlon McMullen, who is under pressure and has to save positions. Haber, remember, is gaining places. He's up inside the top 20, uh, or he's trying to get inside the top 20 in just the next stage. Sutton under pressure, though, in the battle for second still. Phil Sell may think about it at Puan. He's been so good at this corner. He thinks better of it this time. He'll have to try and get it done at a different point in time. Kyle Stokes behind, still not quite close enough. A tenth and a half, maybe, to try and get past Marlon McMullen. Phil Self thinking about the move, maybe at Fania this time. It's still not going to be good enough yet. He may just have to go at the bus stop in a last gasp move if he wants to get this done. But Jordan Ross is just walking away with this one. It's just clear. No chance of a move at Stavolo. This is a passing section of track. Behind that, Kyle Stokes will be thinking, well, I've got exactly the same position. If I want to fight this one, if I want to get my moves and I want to get my position, I deserve as many points because I've been fighting just as hard. Sutton under pressure. Still trying to defend this one from Filso, who has been squeaky clean over this lap. Keep an eye out, though, on this corner. This is going to be the crucial one here at Blanchemont. How hard do you push it? Very hard. And this is the chance Filso wants. Jordan Ross will come to the line. He will pick up the victory. Filso will try the long way around, try and get it going. Now he's got to try and crisscross it up and under if he wants to get it going. Jordan Ross wins it here at Spa Francochon. But for second, Sam Sutton maintains and holds on for it. The battle for fifth. Just McMullins as they make their way to the line. He holds off Carl Stokes as uh, Jack Boyd will get fourth place. Keep an eye further back in the background. Where is Harley Haber ahead of Scott Gamble in 21st position as he's been looking to fight, but it'll be a top 20 overall. And there is one driver struggling in the background. It's Michael Taliancic who has overdone it and he stopped the car. He stopped the car. I think he's out of fuel. He stalled the car. That's even worse. And Haber's going to get another one for his run. Harley Haber from being dead last at the lap two has managed to steal 17th position a replay up on screen of that my goodness me what a classic here at spa geez take a bow everyone in that race and take a breath sperry that was, that was non-stop calling for about three minutes of incredible action for for that lead it looks like michael talianchis's car simply simply died on him whether it ran out of fuel that's very rare for someone someone like him harley haber just avoided catastrophe when um uh the when Matt Stratford got in contact with a Penrite car at Rivage, just squeezed through and survived to bring home a 17th position, which uh, I guess will be a little bittersweet. But how about Jordan Ross? Phenomenal drive from lights to flag to pick up the win uh, against a quality field of Sutton and Phil Self fighting tooth and nail the whole time.
Oh, it was fantastic racing. Phil saw having to fight with one incident point only. Official classified results then here from Circuit de Spa Francorchamps are as follows. It is Jordan Ross who led lights to flag, but never had it truly easy in the second half of that race. He had to drive the race of his life to keep behind two of the fastest drivers in Australian touring cars. He wins the Evolution Racing Team by just under two seconds over Sam Sutton and Jared Philsell. Jack Boyd will pick up fourth place with Marlon McMullen. Vital points in his championship run. He gets fifth. Kyle Stokes gets sixth with Brady Myers seventh. He'll be disappointed with that despite gaining three places. Michael Healy, a great run to eight. Bo Albert will, should be pretty pleased with a ninth place finish. Non-stop action for him. Pretty sure his stream was, would have been exciting. So well done, Bo. James Scott from fourth down to 10th could have been so much better, but it just unraveled in the second half for James Scott. Thomas Hins up to 11th. So he'll be pretty pleased with that. Damian Johnston in the walls a fair bit, uh, but not so much as the car behind him. Andrew Gilliam up and down like a yo-yo. Lots of pace as well. Had a chance at the podium, but it all unraveled fairly quickly once he got embroiled with a battle on that restart. David Kinman from 29th to 14th great drive from the pursuit sim racing driver we've seen a bit of form from the um the old the old heads at the pursuit sim racing crew then we've seen then we've got steven varga for mark one in, into 15th the rob Bowden bringing up 16th harley haber from being dead last after lap two contact with jared phil so up through o rouge and radion he's managed to salvage 17 place which i think is a very very good result given the circumstances for young harley scott gamble gets 18th jonathan bain in 19th brian borg from 50th gains 30 of his own to finish this one off in 20th position he's your biggest mover and shaker in the field simon vela 21st tally Ancic had a top 15 in the bag until he stalled it it's 22nd for him michael kirkham gets 23rd greg sharp 24th in the end now we've got a lot of unsung heroes here with some with some great moves up the field with Jeff starting with Jeff Bennett in 25th who started 36 so great great stuff from him Wayne Taylor up into 26 from 34th Simon Mazomo we hate to give him credit but I mean we have to we have to applaud a 43rd to 22nd effort then we have Alan Dawson from 40 41st to 28th and then Lindsay Hobbs from 46th to 29th and then Matthew Norris for Team Hyperdrive from 47th to 30th Yep, he's done a good job. 31st and 32nd, Shane Evans and Brett Hender. 33rd would go to Cray Jones with Josh Pickett there in 34th. Jamie McKnight is the last of the finishers uh, on the leading lap. He had his incident at the no-name, or what was formerly no-name corner, Jackie Ix. So he gets 35th. Ian Bird, first of the drivers of the lap down, along with Matt Stratford and Matt Morris, who got involved in an incident in the final laps or so. Kane Hewson finding himself a struggle to get himself to the end as did Craig Anspach, and we'll just go through the rest right now. Likes of Jacob Knight, Christian Smart, Jamie Stovold, Griffin Gardner and Tom Freer failing to find finishes. Dylan DeBono, Mitch McLeod got disqualified for instance. Brenton O'Brien didn't make it, nor did James Mackay or Guy Leach. Thomas Freeman did not make it to the start of this race. Your fastest lap scored by Jared Philsell. So we will take a very, very quick commercial break here on the IRC Sports Network because the post-race show is coming to you to this. Racing, you wanted the best, you got them for a rest. Often imitated, never duplicated, the greatest show on dirt, the world of outlaws. Forty of the best sim races. One hundred thousand dollars on the line. Who will rise to the challenge? This is the most competitive and sought-after season in iRacing World Championship history. This is where legends are made. This is the Porsche Esports Super Cup. This is fantastic. This is 
GT racing right now. He's got traction, he's got rhythm, he's got both of them, Maloney! Oh, he's taken Anderson, Anderson's up the wall! Oh my god! These guys are going to want to make their way through the field very quickly. Oh, there we go. Oh, no. That's massive. This is it. This is over. I can't believe this. Oh, my God. God, what? Welcome back, ladies and gentlemen, to AOSC, the Parramatta Suzu Ute Sponsored Series, which has been absolutely sensational here today at Spa Francorchamps. So many storylines coming out of here and heading towards the next round of the championship, which is going to be so, so vital for everyone to try and make sure that their race has worked out in their favor and their championship starts to work. So much you can say about that, but Ross Rizzo still alongside me, still able to talk about this. My goodness, Ross. What a race uh, between the top three. Jordan Ross led lights to flag, but that doesn't tell you how hard he actually had to work for it. Oh, for sure. That that race was on from the from the flag drop. The the collision between Phil Sell and Haber, I think, set the standard for the rest of the evening. Crashes and hard driving all throughout the field. I expected this to be a strategy race. That wasn't the, that at all. That was a, a all out sprint race door-to-door action it was phenomenal to watch but Jordan Ross somehow prevailing despite having all the challenges thrown at him and of course we we often say it but championship implications Jordan picking up vital points Brady Myers putting points on the board as well after his disappointment last week and Harley Haber having a, a relative shocker tonight so the championship all of a sudden has changed after one very aggressive and fast-paced race one very aggressive one very fast-paced race we do have Marlon McMullen here joining us in the commentary box. It was a top five finish for him today. But Marlon, most crucially of all, points slashed in the championship. You must be very happy at the uh, inherent mistakes that have gone on today from the championship leader. Yeah, g'day, guys. Absolutely crazy race. And I survived survived it. And I survived that safety car restart. So that was even better. But yeah, as you said, crucial points today. I knew that. Um, I didn't plan to do that restart, but I'll, I'll take it. And yeah, it just sort of shot me up further up the front end and didn't want to really sort of do anything silly with Jack. I mean, I, I made a mistake and he got me, but just try to hold on to him towards the end. And yeah, I was thinking about, you know, fifth, that's uh, a good load of points today. So I'll take him. Well, you take all the points and well, you got to take as many as you can. You are a consistent finisher when it comes to this field. When you know that a field like this, uh, at a track like this, which has so much relevance with series that are going on, such as the E-Series that's coming up and everything else with the championship and your fight and everyone's fighting for just something else to try and gain themselves an advantage. How important was it just to stay consistent, make sure that you're putting in simple lap times whilst everyone else around you, likes of Haber, Phil Cell, Gilliam, um, all losing their heads around and making unforced errors? Well, to be honest, I wasn't driving at my best tonight as well, but I think that might have saved me because, you know, I was sort of hanging back from everyone. But, you know, that, that, that's all I can ever do every week. If I don't have the pace, I'll just be as consistent and clean as I can. I don't think I hit anyone today. I made an awesome move on, on Jack around the outside of uh, uh, the, the corner of No Name. I think it's pure or whatever it is, one of those corners. But, yeah, you know, so I'm just trying to keep it clean, not, you know, get involved in any incidents. And if others, you know, stumble up along the way, well, all I can do is try and capitalise. I mean, I saw that Haber had the incident with Phil Cell early in the race. He was able to come back, so he did really well. But, you know, those things can be disastrous. But, yeah, all we can do is just try and be clean, try and not get any penalty points. I know there's a lot of attention going on at the moment, but, you know, I'm just doing me. And as I said, today I didn't drive the best, so I've got to sort of work on that a little bit more. I've got some new pedals lately, so, you know, learning each week how to use them and, yeah, didn't maximise them tonight, but, yeah, maximise to get fifth, so it's better than the 13th I qualified. Well, it certainly is better than the 13th qualified, but looking over towards the next few rounds of the championships, we will say, because uh, there is, of course, more than one that you're fighting for. You've got enduro season fully in swing at the moment in Scops. You've got this for AOSC, another enduro coming up uh, in just a couple of weeks' time. Just how are you feeling at the moment, knowing that you are flowing from race to race? It's consistent results cons- all the time. And more importantly, for that next race coming up in Scops, the big names all not featuring. Yeah, well, it gives you a bit of confidence, you know, and that's, confidence is a dangerous thing in this uh, supercar field. I mean, you get a win and, 
you know, you just sort of remember how to do it. And it's been a while since, you know, I've sort of won a few races and all that, but I'm still being consistent. And, you know, coming up with Borgie, uh, you know, he's my co-driver. It's, it's going to be a big challenge for him because he knows also, you know, that I'm up there in, in the points, but he delivered for me last season in the AOSC, you know, against um, the Jordan. That was an awesome battle, but, you know, they tripped up and he didn't trip up on that day. So I got all the faith in the world in Borgie. And, you know, all I can do is sort of guide him. And, you know, if we can get, you know, top 10 in the, in the Scops Championship, amazing. If we can get up here again, not winning the championship, but, you know, somewhere in the top three, it's always a good goal. But as I said, I do what I do. I don't really think about the end picture until the end of the season. And then even when the season's end, I just get on with the next season. And that's all you can do at the moment. So you look to try and do. Marlon McMullen, before we let you go, any shout out sponsors? Thanks. Get it off your chest. Yeah, thanks for Jamie for sponsoring me with West End Mazda, also Sam Blacklock Media, uh, Podium Broadcasting. Um, yeah, there's not really too many sponsors on my cars. I'm a privateer, but yeah, thanks for everyone, you know, for supporting me. And I try and do the best clean job every week. So, and thanks for you guys. For- well, that's no problems at all. Marlon McMullen then coming away with a top five finish. But Ross, final thoughts as we bring the curtain down here at Spa Francorchamps. I think if we want to summarize that race, it'd be quicker just to watch it again. There was just so much going on then. And I think Marlon raised a really good point about the future rounds. Enduro's looming. you got to look at drives like like those quiet drives like Borgie, who did a really, really good job today. You've got the pairing of Phil Sell and Ross, both very good today. Jared a little bit on the wild side today, but we know he's, he's excellent as well. You've got the fast pairings in Pursuit Sim Racing as well. Um, and of course, we've got to see what Harley Haber can do if he's got someone to be accountable for with another car, uh, with someone else when he's sharing the car. Well, we'll see who will be accountable in the next few rounds of the championship. It has been sensational again here in AOSC. Every round this season has been one to remember, and you will be very hard-pressed to find better racing out there in terms of excitement at the moment. Make sure that you keep watching on the ISC Esports Network, AOSC, VH Scops, and everything that comes up. That is so fantastic. Also, make sure you check out that Supercars E-Series that will be coming out. The best that Australia has to offer will prove to be massive in terms of the long-term development of Australian sim racing. And, of course, the big event that's happening this weekend at Sim Racing Expo. Make sure that you check out the Porsche Sim Racing Trophy, as well as on Sunday, the GT500, which will, again, look to prove to be amazing racing action. From everyone here, though, at Sim Speed TV, from Ross Rizzo alongside me, and, of course, Jay Kennedy behind the cameras, I've been Jake Sperry. Some brilliant racing, but Jordan Ross... It is a man who proves that this is not anymore a one-man team when it comes to, uh, say, Evolution Racing Team. We said it was maybe a two-man team with Ethan Greg Galt, but again, he proves that he is absolutely on point. He finds everything that he wants. He's got everything that he needs, and now he needs to go fight for an AOSC championship. Fantastic. This is GT racing right now. He's got tracks and he's got rhythm. Both of them. Maloney. Oh, oh, he's taken like Anderson. Anderson's up to him. Oh, my God. Oh, oh my goodness. Half oh, the field's going to get rolled. Six very close. These guys are one I want to make their way through the field very quickly. Oh, there we go. Oh, no. Oh, no. That's massive. This is it. This is over. I can't believe this. Oh, my oh, God. My God, what?